Alicia Acuna joins us now. She is in Phoenix, Arizona, outside the Arizona State House. Alicia? Hi, John. Kind of a sign that this was so expected is that things started to move in pretty quick fashion after Senator John McCain left this earth. We saw the flags behind me here at the Capitol building in Arizona uh, be lowered to have staff. The POW flag went down first and it was down there on its own for a little while. And then we saw it followed by the American flag and then the Arizona flag. And then we started to get the outpouring of love um, and prayer for um, his family, for, for his family that is now in mourning, of course. Um, we heard from Cindy McCain, his wife of 38 years, who said, my heart is broken. I am so lucky to have lived the adventure of loving this incredible man for 38 years. He passed the way he lived on his own terms, surrounded by the people he loved in the place he loved best. And that would be in the at the ranch in Arizona, northern Arizona, that is in Cornville, Arizona, just south of Sedona. This is a place that uh, meant so much to him, his favorite place on earth. Um, as he liked to say, his family, as those who knew him best, um, he started staying there. He was there permanently um, starting in December. His last vote in the Senate was December 7th. Uh, his health started to weaken at that point, and he came back to Arizona, and he stayed in the place where he liked to barbecue, where he liked to enjoy the water that he has there on his property and be with the people who he loves. And, and, and over the months, he did welcome a lot of friends and family. And in terms of the response from the people here in Arizona, there's kind of, cause there's kind of a theme here, if you'll bear with me. Uh, Governor Doug Ducey in a statement said, as we mourn his passing and celebrate his truly phenomenal life, we're also faced with the void. John McCain absence leaves in the heart and soul of our nation. And then also, uh, Senator Jeff Flake of Arizona, he wrote a tribute um, in the Washington Post, and he said, I couldn't bring myself to write this piece until today. It's not that I didn't try, but something in my mind convinced my hands that if I put it off, somehow John McCain might be with us a little longer. I needed that. The country needed that. And that really speaks to for to the the image and the presence that John McCain had uh, there was one political analyst who we talked to about the legacy of John McCain and he said there isn't a politician anyone in politics who is alive now who can remember a time when John McCain was not in politics in Arizona and John as you know he made his mark here in 1982 when he decided to run for the House of Representatives that first time and this is this is a way that Arizona's really got to know who they were getting John McCain McCain, the candidate, was in a debate at the time with the Democrat who was also in the race, who was really trying to paint John McCain as this carpetbagger, this outsider, because, you know, he wasn't from here. He was a military guy, and so he lived all over the place. And so he kind of challenged him on that. And John McCain came back saying, well, if I ran for office in the place that I'd lived the longest, I would have to run in Hanoi because five and a half years in Hanoi in that POW camp was the longest place he had ever been before he made Arizona his home. John. He uh, broke both arms and his leg during the shoot down and was tortured severely by the North Vietnamese. And yet, uh, as I mentioned a bit earlier, he was one of those who voted in favor of dropping the embargo against North Vietnam back in the 1990s. Uh, forgive and forget, that seemed to be his attitude.